Welcome back to episode 16 of building our ultimate expedition vehicle. In this episode, we build a heated and vented ski gear box for the back of the camper. So on the trip we just went on, our ski gear ended up on our bed, in the bathroom, on the floor, on the floor, falling over, falling over. So we're going to fix that. So I designed all the parts in SolidWorks, uh, which is pretty cool because it allows us to open the individual pieces. And then we can flatten it and send that part to the plasma table and it gives us all our bend lines. I'm currently marking the dimensions that we're then gonna go bend on our brake. Got the top welded on, and now it's time to put the bottom on. Grind to fit, clamp, tack, and weld. So for the mounts, we're gonna, it'll be bigger angle than this, but a piece of angle welded on like that on the top and the bottom. On the bottom, it'll weld into our subframe, or sorry, on the bottom, it will bolt into our subframe, and then on the top, it'll bolt into our exoskeleton. So aside from the step bit, my other favorite type of drill bit for drilling in metal is actually these DeWalt pilot tip bits. I like the ones that say titanium on the package. Uh, I've tried all sorts of expensive drill bits and I've just had the best luck with, with those. Those drill bits are also inexpensive. So if you wreck them trying to drill into something with your hand drill, it's okay. Now that we have the box all welded, we are going to rafter line it. And then once that's cured, we can mount the door to it and get it mounted on the camper. We just finished raptor lining the boxes and I wanted to share a tip with you guys that Riley discovered when I think we were painting a car trailer and it's a good way to keep paint from sticking to you. Slather yourself, I mean slather yourself in sunscreen before you do it. Then all you have to do is hop in the shower and it washes right off. You'll look really silly, <laughs> but it works. Now that the Raptor liner is dry enough to handle the box, we're going to line the inside with carpet. Cutting the fabric to size with scissors didn't work very well, so I went and got my rotary cutter that I used for my upholstery work, and we're gonna see if this works better. So we have the carpet where it goes in the box, and I'm gonna start by just gluing one side on. That'll hold it in place so that I can glue the rest. We're losing daylight, but this is the rubber seal that's gonna go on the inside of the door. So I'm gonna put that on now before we put the fabric in so that the fabric can go up against the seal. We wanna be able to use this gearbox in winter and summer. So it's important to make it configurable. So what we're gonna do is use this garage rail system from Lowe's with these hooks and they just snap on and off so that we can slide things around, move it around and use it for different seasons. Now that we have all of our gear mocked up in the box, we're figuring out where our peg should go and we'll pull it all out and mount the rails. Now 
Now that we have all the rivets installed, we're gonna put the latch on the door. So basically we're gonna drill a hole here to install the latch. <laughs> <laughs> you disturbed my nap. <laughs> hiding, hiding and napping is more of my maneuver. These are the same uh, cam latches we used on our underbody boxes and staircase. They're from McMaster Car. They're metal. They just feel super nice and they're really inexpensive. So we're really happy with these and gonna keep using them. So the box is gonna mount right here next to the ladder. Down here, I'm gonna be using these long bolts all the way through the subframe to bolt the box in. Up top, I can't get to the back side, so we're gonna be using riv nuts. And then we're also going to mount the box to the ladder the whole way. The load will be spread out over a very large distance on our exoskeleton and subframe. I'm applying some Cicaflex to the riv nuts that we're installing to make them waterproof. I told you it gets everywhere. Now that we have the door on and the latches on, we're gonna attempt to put this thing in place and bolt it on. So now we're bolting the gearbox to the ladder. That way some of the weight of the gearbox will get distributed over this strong corner of the camper. It's time for the first opening of our gearbox. No more skis on the bed. So I was looking for some reasonably priced, high density, waterproof foam to use for spacing our skis and our ski box. And then I came across yoga blocks and I think they are going to work perfectly. I want both sets of our skis to be attached in the box so that if we're on a hill, they don't wanna fall out. So I'm gonna use these little Velcro cord keepers and I think they're gonna work really well. I found these cool boot warmers. So I'm gonna add these to my boot pegs so that when my boots are in here, I can turn them on to dry. A famous person once said, there's fabrication and then there's zip ties. So we mounted this power strip inside here. It's got two wall plugs and then it's also got two USBs. That way our boot warmers can plug into this. Riley's boot warmers, because his boots are upright, just slip down into his boot. And then my boots, because they're hanging upside down, actually have the boot warmers just zip tied to the pegs. To turn them on, you just push this button right here. So Riley just finished hooking up the power cords and we're gonna see if our boot warmers work. Start it up. Oh yeah. All right. This is lit. It's, these boot warmers are cool because they have a built-in timer so you can turn them on for three, six, or nine hours. We're installing a vent fan into our snow gear box. So I've got my cutout marked out up there and time to cut it out. And let's check out the instructions. I think we're on our own for this one. I think this is the first time I've used the Sawzall on this project. That's strange. One of the last pieces to the ski gear box puzzle arrived and I am very excited about it. We needed a way to mount our poles in the box and I found these fishing pole clamps and I think they're gonna work perfectly. 
So we made this plate to hold the upper clamps. That way we only have to bolt two holes through the box, not four holes. The whole point of this box is to put wet gear in it. So I'm gonna drill a small drain hole in each corner so that water that accumulates in the bottom can get out. I found these slick clips that we're gonna use in the bike box and the ski box that when you don't wanna use them, they fold flat. So now if Riley's jacket's really wet or his bib, you can fold this hook down, hang it on. We don't actually know if the door closes. We're about to find out. <laughs> The other cool thing about this box is if we're not planning to ski for a while, all of our ski gear clothing fits in that bag up there. So everything we need to ski fits in this box. It's ventilated and it's heated. Pretty awesome. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as our to-do list gets shorter and we get closer and closer to hitting the road.